In every medium there are certain works that completely change your perspective of that medium. Eye openers, bar raisers, whatever you want to call them, they're a crucial part of experiencing art. Watching certain pieces can completely change your view on everything else. They can heighten your appreciation for other works or help you realise that your previous experiences weren't as great as you first thought. For better or for worse, it's essential that your viewing lens is as clear as possible, that you have the best understanding of your experience. Here I'm going to pinpoint 10 anime that did this for me, and hopefully you can find a few shows here that will enhance your appreciation and understanding of the medium. There were so many shows that influenced me, it was really hard to pick which ones to use. So I guess it's best to start with one of the earliest anime shows I ever watched. Eureka 7 was interesting as a newcomer to the medium. Packed with colourful characters, robots and pretty colours, it showed me elements of both visual and narrative storytelling that I'd never quite seen before. Looking back now, a lot of the writing was rather basic and occurs quite regularly in other anime shows. But at the time I was blown away by the show's ambition and its passionate approach towards the world and its story. The characters were so much more dynamic than I'd seen on television previously. They actually felt like they were alive, like they actually mattered beyond basic plot convenience. Eureka 7 showed me a lot of what the medium had to offer, and I'm still very fond of a lot of those elements today. It was a really interesting introduction to anime and I'd recommend it for today's newcomers. One of the next big surprises was Mushishi, and one that still impresses me every time I watch it. Mushishi has such a unique approach to its narrative. It really showed me what can be done with visual storytelling. It's a show that doesn't have much interest in spelling things out for you with robotic narrations or explanatory text. It has such an elegance with its writing and visuals that flow so naturally. I got a new appreciation for writing that blends in with the narrative. Due to its natural pacing and fluid storytelling, the immersion never broke. It made me wonder why other shows had such a hard time conveying their plots. Why did other shows have to spend valuable time dumping information to the viewer, when Mushishi effortlessly tells its stories with no unnecessary add-ons? Unlike Eureka 7, I still hold Mushishi to the same high level as I did when I first watched it, and it continues to be a standard I set for similar storytelling. Cowboy Bebop is a series that I think many others would include on this list too, but probably all for different reasons. Bebop done a lot of really interesting things, I think the most important being its maturity. It was completely disinterested in appealing to a wide audience with stylistic normality, instead it opted for a completely unique and now iconic look. I felt like Bebop was one of the first really mature anime series I'd ever watched, both in its presentation and its subject matter. It tackled darker, more grown up themes of adult relationships and emotions. It wasn't about friendship or kindness, at points it was about the exact opposite. This made the characters feel so much more genuine and real. They didn't just feel like vessels for ideas and plot points, but real people with dynamic emotions. Similarly to Mushishi, Bebop just helped raise the bar for narrative creativity. It successfully making classic stories with an episodic formula just helped me cement my standards for narratives at the time. Bebop elegantly drifts in and out of different styles throughout the series, offering exciting situations and experiences. It proves that it's not impossible to have a completely different experience with every single episode, while maintaining a consistent overall style and feel to the series. There seems to be a pattern of episodic shows here, Ghost in the Shell being the next one. Both the movie and standalone complex almost gave birth to my love for cyberpunk, creating such a believable and immersive world with such foreign ideas, managing to create something so dark and powerful using elements normally associated with fantasy. It's all just amazing. The movie obviously blew me away with its unorthodox approach to dialogue and handling of its themes. Both were absolutely magnificent, something I'd never experienced before. And the series is amazing in that it incorporates everything that the franchise could possibly offer, and in the most complex fashion. It has politics, philosophy, character drama, action, and the mastery of such a vast platter of elements is not an easy task, but standalone complex does just that over its duration. There are very, very few things to achieve as high a level of aesthetic perfection as Akira has. It was very much my introduction to that golden period of the 80s, and I still feel myself attracted to the decade for what it achieved. Akira epitomises the idea of creative freedom, breaking all the boundaries and pushing the medium to its limits. Akira not only showed me the potential of animation, but also visual world building. Nothing has felt so large and overpowering as some of the shots in this film. The sense of scale in Akira has been matched by very few over the decades. Satoshi Kon is easily one of the most interesting and unique directors I've ever had the pleasure of watching, Millennium Actress being one of my favourites. As a narrative it's fairly simple, of course on purpose. The movie lives from the diverse and radical style. 
Changing to the rhythm of the plot, Millennium Actress transitions beautifully through a collage of different genres and styles. It's one of the only works I've ever seen that so perfectly encapsulates art in a piece of art. It feels like a journey through the medium, an all-you-can-eat buffet of style and technique. The use of surrealism was key in this. It's not something every director can do, but it's such an evocative and interesting tool. So Kaiba took the surreal and the bizarre to the next level, creating a whole series with not only an abstract visual style, but a trippy and surreal narrative style as well. You would think that this would cause a loss of immersion, but Kaiba managed to create a sort of consistency that ties everything together, and you become a lot more attached to the story. Once this simple hurdle is overcome, it opens up a pool of possibilities, and the series flows gorgeously from then on out. Kaiba created something incredible with such unconventional techniques. I gained a new appreciation for this and started to grow weary of the usual art styles people used. Why stick to the norm when something unique can be just as, if not more, effective? Now Aria just blew me away. It had world building and character development that I'd never seen before. For a series that doesn't use dramatic plot points or events, it was just as compelling and immersive as anything else I'd ever seen. And not because of any plot device, I just wanted to be a part of the world. With the use of tranquility and simple philosophic ponderings, I was completely at one with the series. I was so impressed with the series. The way in which Arya is told was magnificent too. It's a journey rather than just a collection of episodes and series. It's one big experience that gels together perfectly. It was a revelation for me in how it presented its narrative. Technolize is possibly the most eye-opening piece of expression I've ever experienced. Not because it done things that people had done before better, but because it done things that people had never done before. Things that I never even imagined could be possible. It took thinking outside the box to the next level. It threw out the box and just let the series flow naturally. The dark atmosphere of Technolize gave me a new love for this style of painful nihilism. That kind of story that has no regard for its viewer, no regard for anything other than itself. These make some of the best stories. Now the series that has had the most influence on me is without a doubt Legend of the Galactic Heroes. This series set the bar higher than anything I'd ever done before, creating an almost unreachable standard for storytelling. The way in which it conducts itself with so many mature themes, brilliantly developed characters and smart moments of writing was just fantastic. The series not only takes on more than anything I'd seen before, but it manages to make them all worthy of their presence. This goes on to give flight to an epic world. They handled each character and plot point with such care. I never felt as if a character shouldn't have been there or they didn't have an integral role to play in the series. I felt like everything was of importance. Still to this day I've experienced very few, if not no other pieces of art that have strived and achieved as grandly as Legend of the Galactic Heroes has done. There are loads of anime series that have influenced how I view everything else I watch, and these have been a few that hopefully you can find the same influence in that I have, and there are loads that I haven't mentioned. So what anime, series or movies have most influenced you as a viewer? Post them in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, please do click the like button and share it around. And of course, if you want to watch more videos, you can click subscribe or click any of them on the screen. Thank you very much for watching.